Hey, oops, fans. It's Oops the Podcast. <laughs> Here we are. That's it. That's how we're opening today. I'm Francis, and he is Julio. What's going on, dude? How are you, pal? Doing well, man. I want to say thank you to all our new listeners who are checking us out and enjoying the pod. Yeah. We're happy to have you guys here. You are very welcome in this safe space. Guys and girls. Friends. Safe space for all genders. That's right. Whatever you identify as. You know, the gender <laughs> topic has been coming up a lot lately. And I and I talk about this on stage, but I, I my sister's fiance has changed my perspective. Oh, really? Yeah. would love to hear this. Well, because he's such a man that I don't think it's binary anymore. And I don't know if I ever did. I didn't really have a dog in the fight. I didn't care. But uh, it, the idea that it's just either men and women and that's it is not right to me. Right. So you believe one can be less of a man than another That's exactly man. right. My sister's fiance, <laughs> I, I've realized, well, that's, that's definitely a man. And then I'm somewhere below that. So clearly there's a spectrum. Right, <laughs> that's really funny, dude. Dude, he's uh, he is the embodiment of what I understood to be a male growing up, and I have not achieved that. You're pretty manly to me, dude. No, I'm not. You pretty, you're pretty like you behave like a man to me. Really? Yeah. Hmm. You're manly. I feel like in your relationship too, you're very much uh, like a, a manly man. What does that mean? Like you're you're good at like being in control of a situation. Do I walk in and take my slicker off and my hat and hang it on the hook and say, "What's for dinner?" You would, dude. No, that exact thing would have happened minus the final comment. I feel though, like forty years ago or something, you would yeah. have hung it up and be like, "Hi, sweetie." I and she's wearing an apron. Your kids start swinging a cig. Yeah. Sure yeah. Hi, Francis. Yeah, and she takes my briefcase and. <laughs> things are almost done you know what i'm saying that would be nice that would be nice toasty you know yeah i mean dude yeah you you seem pretty manly to me hey let me ask you a question g how much input should a woman have on the ring that you give her oh wow this is a great fucking topic this is a great topic um i mean dude i think that the move is to gather as many tidbits as you can and make a fucking spreadsheet over the years if you think it's going to be the one <laughs> Because she's going to give them to you, dude. She's going to give you those little tips. Oh, I like this kind of cut, whatever. I don't know what any of this shit means, but I've been trying to sort of like assemble these details so that one day I'll be able to handle the situation without having to be like, do you like this one? Yeah. Do you like this one? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be like a fucking loser. <laughs> what do you think? Well, it's <laughs> what you just said is a very sly long-term approach, but not everyone can be afforded the years of uh culling information that that, that requires so there are so many different ways that this can go one is you straight up take the your significant other to a fucking ring store and do what you just said and you know she basically points one out and then you buy either that or one very similar to it and i think that that sucks because there goes the entire element of surprise right right you're not putting i agree any spin on it it's not it's not really your gift it's just you picking out what she wanted totally you might as well buy it on amazon dude 100 percent. what do you think about this okay shout out rebecca friend of mine who brought this up the other day she Bex. goes my she goes my parents told me this is a bad idea but i was saying that i'd be willing to chip in for the ring to get the ring that i want oh my god <laughs> God, dude. I know she's a savage. No. Savage. I don't think that's... I don't know. Well, that's a... Okay, that's crazy. That's crazy, but I have another one for you. Okay. What if you give your significant... You, you give your fiance the ring, and then she takes it to get modified. Ooh. And I'm not just talking about, like, resized. I'm talking moves the diamonds around adds an emerald emerald or a ruby or something uh, she's like well this is really close uh, but i'm just gonna do a little bit of a renovation here uh, <laughs> i know people that have done that that's savage too man that i would feel so bad but i think you could get at over, that point you should you just write her a check that. just hand her a fucking check <laughs> right literally um all right what about this yeah keep how coming. about instead of getting a ring you just build a fucking school in a third world country and name it after your fucking fiance. What are you dating Oprah? 
Dude, I've suggested this and every girl looks at me like, shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> you know what you should do? You should do it without asking her and then present it and then film her as she tries not to freak out. <laughs> <laughs> because she, she knows she's gonna look like such an asshole if she's like a fucking school dude wow i just thought of it this is what you do you build the school <laughs> you go on vacation to the school and you get there and it's named after her and you go this is what i got you instead of a ring you see her reaction and then you actually give her a ring too Oh, yeah. Or you have the students present her a ring that they made in art class. Right. Paper mache. That total they mined piece of themselves. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, we are rewriting the game of love. Dude, that's crazy, man. So wait. So wait. There's so much more to this, though. Um, first of all, I found out that um, Conflict Diamonds, there, there's real... Um, there's real competition in the marketplace now. So it's good. Meaning... There are other companies that have sprung up that are starting to mine diamonds and source diamonds in a way that isn't as brutal as what we saw in, you know, West Africa and Sierra Leone and all those places. It's not like right. child soldiers running around right. getting their hands cut off and stuff. So um, there's a very cool uh, female run diamond company from Canada oh, that yeah. I was reading about. And they've now taken like 18% of the diamond market share. But De Beers, for like 70 years, owned the monopoly on diamonds. Mm -hmm. Was the sole market. They, they had the entire market share. Where is diamonds. De Beers based? It's European, obviously, right? Uh, is it Belgian? It might be. It might be Antwerp, right? That's the big diamond hub. But I'm not sure that De Beers is out of there. Well, that would make sense because of how King fucking Leopold or whatever. Yeah. They say that the Belgians are the worst people to be colonized by, yes. which I think is very random. They, didn't they colonize uh, Congo? Congo. Yeah. yeah. And um, did you ever read those books growing up, the Tintin comic book? Uh, no. No? Not, not written They were Tintin. written by Hergé, who was a Belgian author. Maybe he was French. I think he's Belgian. But that the one they did in the Congo was super racist. Really? Yeah. Jesus. Um, sure, it was insane. Yo, but back to back oh, to sorry, this sorry. this d this diamond conversation, right? So, I, I I know I can tell you this on this podcast. My girlfriend stopped listening to the podcast when we discussed the threesome I had once. <laughs> so I think it was episode. It's a safe. It's a safe Two? space for me to talk about episode her. Four? Yeah, pretty early on. Pretty early. Um. So, I have a family ring. I have a family ring. Let's pop. You got anything good? Sorry, there? sorry. No, no. No. It says it's based in London, but that doesn't necessarily say it. We'll figure it out later. Yeah. Okay, keep going. All right, so I have a family ring from my grandmother. Oh. And Fantastic. it's awesome uh, because it means that instead of spending. I mean, there's so much to talk about. $40,000. Yeah, 30, 40 G's. <laughs> Jesus. You know, what I think is a very good way to do something like this is to take the stones from a family ring and modernize it right. in a setting that is more to That's her what I liking. Was thinking, yeah. And that can be, you know, 10,000 or, or less. But um if I were to give a family ring to my girlfriend and then she were to take that and get it all switched around and reassembled and changed, I don't think that would sit that well with my family. Oh. Do you know what I'm saying? So here's the question. Has someone worn it since your grandmother originally wore it? No. It okay. was my grandmother's ring and then it has been sitting lying in wait for me. Do you know for a fact that they would they'd be they wouldn't like it? No, but imagine it's my mom's mom's ring. And right. it, it's meaningful to my mom. It's right. you know, it's almost become like a horcrux. Right. I don't know if you're a Harry Potter <laughs> From fan. Harry Potter, yeah. yeah. Um, so it contains part of my grandmother's soul and the only way to destroy it is with a basilisk fang. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a chamber of secrets. Uh, so the, the point is, <laughs> okay. So the point is, uh, if I gave that ring straight up to my, my girlfriend, 
it is a possibility that it's not exactly what she was hoping for or wishing. And, and I'm not saying that my girlfriend's this person, but to somebody, let's say. And then if that person then took the family ring and went to, you know, Tiffany's and had them shift things around, get a different band, put some colored stones in there and came back, I could see my mom feeling pretty bummed out. Interesting. Resentful even. Interesting. Well, you could... First, there's a couple things you could do. First of all, I think that the whore clux, whore crux, whatever. Whore crux, yeah. I think that the it's preserved with the diamond itself. You'd have to destroy the diamond with the basilisk fang. Oh, well, yeah, that, that's kind of what I right? was thinking. So, so as long as you don't get rid of the diamonds, which you're not going to do. Oh, it's not, it's not in the ring. It's, the band doesn't matter that much. Right, 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 right. The right. style doesn't matter that much. And that's your grandma, right. you know, God bless her soul. She was, she got married in 1932 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> Before the world was in color. Right, right. Exactly. Before Technicolor even. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, the, you know, the, the, the styles, I think your grandmother would have completely understood at being likely the fashionable gal she was, killing it in the roaring 20s, mm -hmm. you know, co with your grandfather courting her. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I'm sure that I'm making her older than she actually is. No, I don't. I honestly don't really know. Well, when regardless, I think that it's a conversation that is not going to be particularly daunting. Yeah. I also don't think that my girlfriend would, would reset the, the family ring. Your girlfriend's cool. Dude, you know what's funny? Think about this. Think about your grandparents mm -hmm. or even your great-grandparents, right? And think about how conservative people were back in the 1910s, the 1930s, the 50s, whatever. Everyone was so tightly wound and then think about how they had like four or five children. I know. Which means that against that backdrop of stiff shoulders and buttoned up suits <laughs> and pocket watches and top hats, they were still fucking doggy style. That's so funny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. People were still fucking constantly. Like animals, dude. The question I have is, when did condoms come into the fold that is such a fucking good question because you hear about brothels right in the 1800s syphilis just ravaging the world's population yeah and, and yeah so was everyone had people figured out to pull out before then or were you just having sex to completion and then hoping i w i wonder if it's just people started wearing them during the aids epidemic well, that wasn't until the I know. 1980s. 80s, right? I, 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 I don't think, I don't, because you hear these stories in the 70s of just these like raw dog parties. Like, I don't think people were, I think people were just pulling out until AIDS. It's, that's, that's this, I'm pulling this completely out of my ass, but it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. I don't think people are just using condoms. Chris, what do you got? Um, there's like a, I looked up when the history of condoms was, and then there's like the people also asked the first question is when did they, what did they use before condoms? And the ancient Romans used the bladders of animals to protect the women. Lambskin. Interesting. Dude. Yeah. So that's like a dental dam made of beaver. <laughs> <laughs> put, in the, put the old beaver in the dam. Beaver in the beaver, dude. Yeah. Dude, one of my friends texted me that the other day. He goes, dude, I love beef. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> no, he goes, bro, I love a good 69. Don't mind some beef in my face. I was like, what the, you fucking when monster. You, when you hear the word beaver as, of a, as a reference to a vagina, there's no chance that you're picturing a shaven vagina. Right. That is a furry, hairy, pelt- vagina. Heavy, yeah, definitely trappers delight Beaver. vagina. Totally, yeah. Um, all right, sorry, I changed the subject. No, so we're all over the place, but that's okay. The grandfather, the grandparents thing. It's funny. My grandfather is really a character. Dude. Well, rest may he rest in peace. He had a good run, uh, but he would always say funny shit about this because his younger brother had a shit ton of kids, mm -hmm. and he was explaining to me why. He goes, Julio. He he calls me Julietto. He goes, Julietto. I tell Davide. That's his younger brother. He's like. He married, he married, he mar whoever he married, he's like, he going to have a lot of children because she's a very warm girl. <laughs> like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> very warm girl. Like, I don't, does that just mean you're very fertile? I think that's what that means. She's a very warm yeah, girl. That the oven is, is kept at the right temperature. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. he's, 
He's a funny. What else did he say? He goes, he was in World War II. He's like, ah, Julio de Rasha. Fucking. And I'm like, is there more to that thought? <laughs> <laughs> nah, fucking. Uh-huh. God, he's good, dude. Boy, the Russians were, were savage during the I war. I know, dude. Jesus. I mean, they were the ones that, even when they came through Germany after Germany fell, they were raping and pillaging. Right. You know, the they Eastern were. The part of Germany. Yeah. The Americans came through in jeeps and flew flags. And, and I don't mean to propagandize <laughs> our role, but I know that when the Russians came through, people were scared. <laughs> the P in OOP stands for propaganda. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Did. What do you got, Chris? Um, Some new information. Okay. Uh, previously, condoms were simply too expensive as seen, and seen as a luxury for the wealthy. As much as rubber was big, was a big step for condoms. But not until the 1920s, when latex was invented, did they become popular. Interesting. Gotcha. It's just fascinating to me because you know you think about uh, you think about the amount of podcasts about sex and the amount of literature and the Doctor Ruths and all of the kind of proliferation of talking about sex, the openness that we have how it's become a, a huge culture. There's merchandise. There's all this stuff. It's a booming industry, the sex industry. Porn, sex toys, all that shit, right? In the 1940s, were there people who were talking about sex as openly? Right. Were they, you know, were you... How, how hard was it for a young man before marriage to go out and have a one-night stand? Right. Because think about it, right? Back then, religion played a bigger role. We've moved as a nation into a more secular space. And people were devout about their, that, you know, the Christian belief of of abstaining until marriage was much more. Especially in America. It was much firmer. Yeah, exactly. Puritanical. And and, uh, so, you know, a lot, I think it was much more common that the first person you had sex with was the last person that you would ever have sex with. Right. Were there, you know, young guys and young women running around having kind of like, were there walks of shame? Right. Dude, there had to have been. In the 1940s. <laughs> That's funny. I see what you're saying. Were I feel you like... walking past gaslit lamps in your <laughs> dusty clogs? Dude, I almost wonder if it was a thing that was reserved for high society. Because like, you see these, you hear these stories about like queens and fucking, what, that movie, The Favorite. You I never that? saw that, but I, I heard it was good. It's, it was really good. I forget which queen or whoever it was about, but like you hear these stories of like people in those high society circles, like kind of being a little more, having a little more free time mm-hmm. to like fuck around and stuff. I just wonder like logistically, it could, it sounds like it would have been much more difficult if you weren't extraordinarily wealthy. Interesting. Before there was more wealth distribution. Well, that, I, I bet that does have something to do with it. Uh, it's one of those things where like if we had time and we were smarter, we would maybe write something about it and do some research. 100%. But if there's anyone out there that that has time and is smart and wants to send us this info, right? Yeah, I'm we'd like to know. Like I'm an expert, dude. But yeah. I remember they said that like Berlin at one point in like turn of the century was like a crazy open sex situation. I can see that, which is like you know yeah. interesting. And Germany is the birthplace of scat porn, right? Right. Using poop right. as a, a fetish. Weirdos, dude. I don't even know if that's true, but I just, that's all I think about when I think of Germany. No, I think you might be right about that. Yeah. I don't know about that specifically, but like weird bondage shit. They're like known mm-hmm, for that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Safe whatever. words with lots of syllables. But yeah, but the, that's a good point. It makes you think because from my, from my frame of reference, it's only about. Have <laughs> 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 you seen that? <laughs> what? Have you seen Euro Trip? Do you ever see that I movie? I haven't seen it in years, but yeah, I saw it. You ever see that movie? Funny. Is Tom Green in it? Uh, no, that's Road, Road Trip. Road Trip, okay. Euro Trip was a. Uh, Is that Scotty's smaller. mom? Yes. Scotty doesn't know. Isn't that Matt Damon singing that? I think maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. Great movie. Great movie. All right. Anyway, um, keep going. What were you saying? Um, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Remember? Oh, yeah, but so I think of it from the frame of reference of America, and I forget to think about. Maybe in other places it was different because it's like cyclical. Like sometimes places will be open and then when they become conservative, it doesn't mean they can't become open again. Uh You know what I mean? It's sort of like this weird revolving door of like time and bullshit or whatever. Every culture is so different. I mean, I know in Russia, women don't don't tend to have one night stands as much. 
It's like Miami, dude. I think a lot of it rides on reputation. You can really like burn your reputation by becoming known as a lascivious oh, person. Interesting. Um, but even so, fascinating stuff. I, I'm happy that we live in a culture where at this point, I don't mean to be naive in saying this, but I like to believe we are chipping away at slut shaming and you know getting to a point where women going out and banging all the dudes they want is as welcomed and accepted as men have had it for a long time totally i mean dude since i've lived in new york as an adult it's been a decade it's felt like that's pretty much been what it's like i think when you get to a certain age yeah right yeah But, but not only that but i just mean like the interchangeability of partners seemed has always seemed like a much more extreme version than other cities that I've been to How in so? America. Like, I don't know. I noticed like in LA or like Miami, like I noticed that like kind of, there's a lot more using being hot as currency. I've noticed just socially in the sense that like you're hot, whatever, but then you're going to make a guy work for it. You're going to make the right guy work for it. Okay, so so more attractive women are offered are, are wealthier in a sense. No, no, I think. Oh, you mean like in New York? Well, you just said that no, be hot as currency. Right, hot as currency, and I don't. I mean it in a way like current, like relationship currency. So it's like I'm hot, whatever. Like yes, I know you want to bang me. Mm-hmm. I'm hot, yes. So let's go out and like you see if you if you can make that happen. Show me a good time. I don't know. Right. Maybe, I, I might again. Be no, I think ass. there's. I think there's truth to that. But there's this weird like ownership I've always felt like of women and sexuality in New York, where like they want to get laid too or something. Yeah, that's my experience. Yeah, and and I, you know, you look at our friends, Raina and Ashley, and and they're very open about their right. dates and their sexuality. Raina, I know. I I listen to Raina talk about it the way that one of my like high school lacrosse buddies would have totally. you know and i think that that's great i think there's something attractive about being confident about about that stuff yeah much more so than being like acting like you're not and then just being all over the place but isn't it crazy to think that there was i don't know about you there was a time in my life where if i heard that a woman was known to get around right i made judgments right and i i wonder if that had to do with just like being young because i feel the same way yeah. and i don't know if it was a testament to the time or of living in a bubble dude you know what it really fucking was there was a fucking commercial about safe sex where these two people tell me if you saw this where these two people are getting ready to have sex and the guys and the girls like do you have a condom and he's like no but i don't need that and then another random dude comes into the bedroom right and is like well then I guess you might as well have sex with me too. And then all of a sudden, like five more people come in and they're like, and me too, and me too. And then the tagline was like, when you have sex without a condom, you're having sex with all the people that they've had sex with before. <laughs> and so I had this idea. It was like, it was like a big game of sex telephone. That's that funny. if I'd heard that a girl, you know, was getting around, all of a sudden I'm just like, rubbing my dick against the dicks of all these other dudes <laughs> and that I was too afraid of STDs. That was the big reason. Oh my God. That's hilarious. That's such stupid rhetoric and yeah. logic. That's the same as saying like, if you eat with a fork at a restaurant, you're making out with everyone who's ever eaten here, dude. <laughs> what about washing your genitals? I understand the point, but yeah. like it sucks. I, I remember getting scared with propaganda a lot of those um in high school even in our lifetime there the some of the sex ed commercials that we saw were fucking old yeah they were out of touch right yeah i'll tell you back to the ring thing really quick oh, yeah. i did uh have this conversation with my girlfriend last night about the ring and it was something where she knew that I was not excited about having this conversation. Because I think I, I do bits in my act about it, right? Where I'm like, it's ridiculous that, you know, women have so much say over this, blah, blah, blah. And so she was like, are we ever going to talk about it? And I was like, let's talk about it. And I, she knows that I have a family ring, right? But she doesn't know what it looks like. And I was <laughs> like, what do you want? And she starts giving me answers. 
And I'm just thinking like, I sure hope this fucking matches up with what I've already <laughs> got. You know, how close is it? And we're going along and it's pretty good. And I'm trying to keep my poker face, right? And because uh, she's like, yeah, I don't want any, I don't want any colored gems or anything. And I'm like, yeah, okay, good, right? <laughs> good, uh huh. And then she's like, and then I'm not really sure about whether or not I want platinum or a gold band. And I'm like, I think, I think platinum's probably better, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's 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 more precious metal and suits your skin tone. You've already got a lot of gold jewelry. You probably don't want any more, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So I'm trying to lead her towards this thing, but. uh I don't know. We're still a long way off, I think, and uh, we'll see. Dude, if I can wish Have you had well. that conversation? No. Gotcha. Well, like, I don't know if this was the kind of conversation that you were having. It wasn't like the conversation, but right. we've talked about rings before. Dude, she told me that she and her girlfriends one day all went down after brunch to a ring store and tried on rings. Oh, God. Can you imagine... Oh my God. You, me, and the boys, <laughs> one day after a fucking workout, oh God. running down and being like, you know what we should do? <laughs> Let's go. Trying some fucking rings. Let's go practice our signatures for prenups. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go get some. Uh, I don't even know what. Let's go. Pra Let's go practice our first dance. <laughs> Prenups thing's insane. Be like, oh, dude, great signature, man. There's no way they won't believe that yeah. was you. I don't know. I just, I know it's kind of a crazy exercise, but that's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah the ring is such a like girl like gossiping situation. Yeah, like I've almost never even heard of a bad situation. I've never heard of a girl who just fucking hated her ring and like was embarrassed by it. And like, I feel like most guys, I, I, I have no idea. If anybody has a good one, please let us know. That's, I'd be curious to I hear just, about. For me, Ring unfortunately, oopses. my cynicism tells me that as long as you spend over a certain amount. The, like, how will they even most, know how much you spend? Well. Do you just mean that it'll reflect Just looking the at it, you know, size of the diamond, all that shit. What do you think if you and you have you, you I don't know if you've done any research. I've but what do you think the this. range is? Okay, so. What do you, what are you, where are you living right now? I know a guy who spent 40000 and he didn't seem like a guy who could afford to spend 40000 He Maybe he is, and I just don't know. I was like, holy fuck. Bought it in cash, whatever. Then I know another guy who I think is like, does pretty well who spent like eleven, and he got a good deal, and he knew a guy, and blah, blah, blah. Everyone, everyone says, every I got single, a good deal. I knew a guy. That. It's like getting a car lease. Everyone's yeah. like, oh, I got him down. <laughs> You're a fucking moron. You know dude. what it's really like? It's really like anyone that just came out of surgery and says, the best elbow doctor. He's the number one elbow doctor in America. Have you ever heard Bro, someone? I'm pretty sure you said that. On I, I did. And that's what I was told. Have you ever met somebody that just came out of surgery and was like, yeah, this doctor is kind of the middle of the road. I don't know. I got a good deal. Polarizing <laughs> reviews. You know, we had to t cut the lights off for a little bit, but uh, <laughs> he, he swapped out mid mid stitch. <laughs> Dude, everyone brags about how the guy who did their surgery was the number one guy. You know, so oh, I'm so, so lucky that my, my aunt's sister knew the best earlobe practitioner in fucking Phoenix. Dude, totally. And there's different levels of it. They'll be, it can be regional. It can be, some people say in America, some people be like, the best on all of Long Island. Yeah, I yeah. That one a bunch. Fucking, that's hilarious, dude. You know what's also crazy about that? One time I went to visit Morocco with my sister and we were driving around the country with a guide Sick. and we went into the desert, right? And we were, I mean, we drove like nine hours into the desert and the, the guide who was driving, he told me that in this particular town that we drove through, he said the nearest, he said that for, for like 400 miles in any direction, there isn't a doctor. Wow. There's not one doctor for 400 miles. Wow. And so that anybody that any bad shit that happens, you either have to like fucking take the person to the guy 400 miles away or you just die. Yeah. I do watch. I bet that village has like really high life expectancy. I know. Right. Something also, about like, nobody whines. Life. What? Nobody complains oh, right, about right. anything. <laughs> just, Jesus. Yeah. Simple living, dude. Okay. So back to oh, rings. 
rings. Yeah. So, like, dude, yeah, I've heard such a wide range. I've heard you're supposed to spend a third of your annual salary you on know, it. Yeah, the three months. I mean, that. who came up with that? I don't know. And I, that, I, don't I like guarantee it, it wasn't oh, an, a financial advisor. Right. <laughs> wasn't you know a fucking was? economist. Wasn't a comedian. And it wasn't a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's who it wasn't. That's true, dude. That's yeah. true. But also, like, it's so hard for me to quantify what three months pay is because some months I don't make any money. Dude. <laughs> What if you go off a job you had six years ago? When right. I was mowing lawns in ninth grade, right. three months' salary was like forty-eight dollars in ones. That's see, that's the trick. Yeah, that's the trick. You didn't say which job based off your twenty twelve income, <laughs> dude. That's hilarious. No, but you're right. And but then like some, yeah, it's just a really. And I get that there's ways that you can make it obvious, but that just seems like so much fucking money. It's stressful. Yes. Donate so, to school, dude. So your range. Let's say gun to your head, you had to buy a ring tomorrow. Oh, and you you said to yourself, ah, I don't mean to ask too personal of a question. Okay. But let's say, you like, ask, where, are you, I, where are you I'm, starting? I'm fully okay with that. Um, I mean, dude, listen, I'd be, try, I'd try to get a ring that everybody. And this is the thing. I know that she, I wouldn't be able to pull off the like get a shittier diamond because she won't be able to tell. But it's big because girls like she'll know that it's. Shitty. Oh, she's got one of those little she just, eyeglass things. She noticed, <laughs> <laughs> and a dentist light that she can just pull in. I don't know, Julia. Is that a monocle? Is that a, it? a, an imperfection? Dude, that is so funny. F fair enough. Okay, that's a valid point you just made. Um, but I'm, I'd be worried that she would foil any plot I had to, to save money. Uh -huh. um, but I'd be starting at spending all the money that I have if I had to buy one tomorrow because I don't... <laughs> I don't think I have enough this money. Baseline, all the money you have. All of my money. Poof. Gone. Wow. It makes me sad. I was I started getting sad thinking about that. Okay, well, you hold asked on a second. That. Would you ask your parents for a loan? Would you would you finance? Would you all that stuff? I don't think that my parents would give me a loan. Interesting. And it's not because like, you know, dude, we you know, my migrant family. Yeah. Like, I don't think that I wouldn't want to burden them with that. Sure. I want them to be able to enjoy their autumn years. Got it. Not have Got to worry it. about financing right. some extravagant ring I want to buy my fucking girlfriend. In the Italian culture, is there an expectation that the younger generation will support the older family members in later life? I don't know, dude. Like, Chris is nodding his head. I just know what I have noticed is that men get babied by their mothers until they get married. Like, it's not weird in Italy to live with your parents until you're married. Interesting. Even if you're 40. Got it. And a lot, a large percentage of the population is, like, the, the economy's not as good as it's been. And, like, a lot of people don't have jobs. A lot of people live with their parents and are, like, getting hitting those ages. Right. So, I don't know. That's all I know. But what about you? Um, to, to all the questions. We I don't start think. With the first. Uh, no, my parents are certainly not expecting me to, to help them through retirement. Oh no, my I don't think my parents are either. Yeah. I would like to be able to. But I meant about the ring situation. Okay. So, so I never actually answered, but the answer is all my money. And I don't and and let's just say I don't have fifty thousand dollars saved. No. Up. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so at that point, whatever ring you give, if you are able to say, Look, I spent every single dollar I had on this, there's nothing she could say except for her vagina drying up perpetually <laughs> yeah it could be the biggest turn off of all time but <laughs> could she be the can't be mad at life, you dude. right but she can be like i don't want to marry you anymore <laughs> here take this back and return it you what if she was money. like that's the worst financial decision you've ever made uh, you should have bought me uh, something homemade and then dude you need to act no matter what like you took it in stride that you can't make her feel you totally. need to be like don't worry about how much it was. This is, you know what I mean? Yes. You can't. It reminds me of this story that I heard once where this girl that I knew who had wealthy parents, they, her, she was dating a guy who was like not, didn't come from a wealthy family. And he got her tickets to a basketball game and they were in like the mezzanine. And she was texting a friend of mine being like, Ugh, he got us like the shittiest seats to the game. Come on. And it just like made me feel so terrible. And I just hear those words. Anytime I think about these kind of decisions. Dude, this is why I love dating poor girls. <laughs> I love pulling up some milkmaid from the slums. <laughs> Bro, they know, man. There's Instagram now. smudges of soot on her cheeks <laughs> and a fucking bonnet in her hair. After a long day. Churning her. butter with a wooden ladle. 
<laughs> I go grab her and I'm like, come, come join us at the mountaintop. Uh, yes, use the far left fork. <laughs> and she looks at your hands and she goes, you've never done a hard day's work in your life. Yeah, that's right. Every movie. I feel and like then that's... she gives me a hand job with calloused fucking <laughs> chafed up hands. Yeah, dude. Makes my dick bleed. Makes your dick all fucking yeah. dusty. So, okay, so so here's the thing. My range for rings is all derived from what my friends have told me. Okay. And because I, a lot of my friends are now engaged or married. And as it started to happen, I received their numbers with great scorn. And again, this is the whole the Harvard bubble thing coming about. I, I, I just thought, my God, these guys, like, what the fuck? Are you really falling for this? You're really buying into ring culture and the De Beers, you know, inception in our brains. And child of, labor. Yeah, of, of needing to spend this much on something that really, the, the market value of, of diamonds is, is worthless. There's no reason that diamonds are worth what they are. Right. They have no material value. Right. You know, unlike steel or right. fucking petroleum. Right. Real commodities that fluctuate, right? right. So anyway, uh, I think the low end, based on what I've seen, would be like 20. Okay. 20 Gs. The high end that I've seen, 50 and above, Ugh. you're like... Ugh exhibit you're cruising straight up you can look at my ride you can examine your acne with it yeah yeah the, i i know a couple people that have spent over 50 and fuck those people dude <laughs> god damn it god damn it but dude here's the thing here's the thing for those people fifty thousand dollars is so much less than three months salary i know i have a few friends classic who are I have I have multiple friends that were on the Forbes 30 under 30 list. Classmates of mine, very close friends. Where I went to school surrounded me with people who are so successful at such a young age that the world of comedy would never right. make any sense right. standing next to them. Right. That our ascension uh of salary over the years and how long it takes to make 100 G's a year, 200, 500 G's a year in our world right. is just, you can't outrageous. even compare it to what Dude, they're totally. doing. And even where you're at too, it's like, not only do you have, it's a lethal cocktail of intelligence, work ethic, and nepotism. It's like everything you need to just be unbelievably successful. Yeah, that's well said. I will say that my most successful friends did not benefit from nepotism. And, and they were just that smart. Right. Well, boy, what a fun episode. Uh, please send us your thoughts on the ring situation, also the history of uh, safe sex, if you've got any thoughts on that. Um, I am at... Uh, what's that, Chris? Yeah, check out um, check out our YouTube page. We have a Oops, shit ton of podcast. clips. Thanks. Uh, shout out to Chris for yeah. cultivating it really nicely. Our Instagram has grown very, very nicely. As and well. uh, I'm at Francis C. C. Ellis. You can catch me at Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia. March 5th to the 7th. Julia, where can we find you? Uh, I'm going to be um, in Denver. Comedy Works, 16th to the 19th of March. I have some South by Southwest dates, too, that I'm hammering down. Ooh. Uh, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say what they are until I know for sure, but I'll have a couple shows there, too. Very cool. Oh, yeah. As always, folks, thanks for joining us on Oops! The Podcast, and we will see you next week.